wounded and shaken. We're here to give a helping hand in any way we can. But he We celebrate every blessing, pulling down every cursing through the music we play and the programs we share right here at Love, Love, Love 101, right here at Love, Love, Love 101, right here at Love. Our children can stay. We now present weather lights in association with the National Meteorological Service of Jamaica. Local forecast for Tuesday, August 16. A tropical wave is just east of Jamaica. Additionally, there is a trough across the Central Caribbean. The tropical wave is expected to move across the island today. Meanwhile, the trough is expected to linger across the region over the next few days. 24-hour forecast. This morning, partly cloudy across eastern parishes, otherwise mainly sunny. This afternoon, scattered showers across most parishes with thunderstorms across western and north central parishes. And tonight, partly cloudy and becoming fair. In the three-day forecast, Wednesday, partly cloudy morning. Expect scattered afternoon showers and thunderstorms across central and western parishes. Thursday and Friday, partly cloudy morning. Also expect scattered afternoon showers through to evening showers and thunderstorms across most parishes. That's it for Weather Bites, brought to you by Love 101 in association with the National Meteorological Center. Listeners to Love 101 FM are advised that the views and opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily those of Love 101 FM. <laughs> Hey, good morning, good morning. I am Steve Blair, and wow, it's another Tuesday, another great day, and we're here to big up all the Rockites across Jamaica on Love 101 and to just big up the name of Jesus Christ. This is The Rock, the only live talk show of its kind on radio in Jamaica. And on The Rock, we discuss all sides of a topical issue that has the church, its congregants, and society as a whole thinking, yes, Thinking about the things they've believed, heard, studied, or read, causing believers and unbelievers to consider and or reconsider the things they've heard, believed, um, the, the things that they've ignored or misunderstood. We take on various biblical-based issues. But most of all, what we've been doing the last couple of months is bringing the Bible to you and just taking that time to go through the Bible, uh, encouraging our our brothers and sisters through the Word of God, using the Word of God. And that's what this program and this station is all about, the Word of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know some of you are looking at me on Facebook and saying, wow, wow, wow. I mean, I haven't shaved in a week, and so I'm carrying a bit older look today, but I still feel pretty young, though very tired. And uh, this is still The Rock, and this is still Steve Blair. Well, we are very real here, and sometimes we try to rock the boat just to get people thinking about what the Word of God is saying. But at the end of the day, everything comes down to the question, what does the Bible say? This is a discussion where all views contend, but they may not stand that test. A very special welcome to our listeners on the love101.org. Yes! Our online listeners, you are great, and we love you. And also, welcome to the, welcome to those joining us via the Love 101 FM app, downloaded from the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. 
you know, I say it every week, we have Love 101's The Rock on Facebook and on YouTube. So I want to let you know that if you're out there, maybe you should just call one of your friends and tell them, we're talking about the Bible and understanding the Bible and going through hermeneutics today. Maybe if they have questions, they'll want to call in. Outside of that, they need to listen to see what's going to be brought on this station. Uh, so if you're on Facebook, we, we have the, the Rock Love 101 on Facebook and on Love uh, YouTube channel. We say this word just about every week on The Rock, hermeneutics. What's it all about and what is its purpose? Why do we keep referring to it? Uh, well, that's our discussion and more today on The Rock. And I know I've been looking forward to this program and I have two wonderful, wonderfully special guests. Now, just to remind you, we'll talk about that. But before we do, I'll take the time to just bring a few things that are on my mind. And this week, not as passionate as last week, I don't think, but it's still on my mind. I think about Jamaica ever so often. And, you know, even yesterday I stopped by uh, some food on the road. And I'm wondering, why is it that uh, customer service people, whether they're selling burgers or patties or shirts or uh, bananas, whatever we're doing in Jamaica, why is it that we treat customers as if we don't need them? It, it made me just stop to wonder as I stopped on the road. The, the young lady, she she took my money. She didn't really care about making sure that I would come back and buy again. She didn't act as if I was a necessary component in her daily life. I wonder what is it with Jamaica that we just don't care, especially when we're not the boss. Somehow we forget the boss cannot pay us if we're not earning the funds on the inside of the business, whether you're outside or inside. Somehow we forget that the, 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 the whole situation fully depends on that customer. I did a paper recently on Amazon, where Amazon's boss or former CEO, Jeff Bezos, said that his company lives for the customer. Everything is done for the customer. Everyone who works on the inside of the company lives for the customer because it's a customer-centric company, meaning totally that they don't plan from the inside. They plan from the outside. They don't plan from the top. They plan from what the customer has to say and what benefits the customer. Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica. It is a very rare occasion to go into facilities across Jamaica. Every Everything that somebody is going through, if they've had a bad day, comes out when we have this uh, purchase selling uh, situation taking place. Everything happens as if to say, well, I really don't care if you're here. Just give me the money. And then it's the attitude. You know, here, take it. Like, you don't want it? Something wrong. Something definitely wrong, folks. We need to go back to school. Our children cannot be brought up in this country to present a, a great Jamaica in the future that struggles to say, I appreciate your business. Uh, tourists come to this country and somehow they get some kind of service. Is it training? Is it that tourist workers are often commissioned workers who depend on what these people say and do? Uh, everything you do in America and around the world, they want you to fill out a survey. They want you to say something about their service. In Jamaica, we don't care. And with that in mind, I, I, I read the story in the paper. Um, it's today's paper. Today is the 16th. Yes, the, today's Observer, where the public defender tags PICA, the RGD, the Criminal Records Office of Jamaica, for causing pain to Jamaicans. Boy, if I could find a million dollars to give to the public defender's office, I would say thank you. Because whenever you go to a government office, it's just as bad or even worse than what is happening on the outside. It's a Jamaican problem, but it should not be happening in, in the government agencies or the state agencies. Well, they... Public defender Herbert McKenzie says uh, he was participating in a panel discussing an, a, a panel discussion put on by the Office of the Political Ombudsman in recognition of his 20th anniversary 
wow, I I got to call Bishop Blair and tell him happy anniversary for this thing that he was involved in. But but he said the three companies, the three agencies were examples which hold themselves out and advertise the type of services they deliver, but they're not consistent with what is being delivered. He says, I use those as examples because there's no shortage of complaints at the public defender's office with respect to these authorities. He goes on to say that the commonest ones that they get, and it applies to all three, you pay for a service advertised at, for argument's sake, 8,000, and you get the service or the item in three days, 10,000, 15,000, or you get it in 24 to 48 hours. Far too often, citizens pay the prescribed sum for these guaranteed services, and at the end of the period, they are nowhere closer to getting it than before they approach the entity. You know, the JPS, uh, the NWC, they have the OUR to police what they promise. Somehow, we should not have to be policing good service. Somehow, we should not have to be policing um, the, the, the character of a state agency in making a promise to the people in fact, the public defender goes one step further to say that he recognizes that the criminal records office and the RGD downtown are so close together that sometimes the crowd on the outside is unbearable. We just don't care about people. Is that our everyday life in Jamaica? It's about me, myself, and I. We don't care if somebody gets wet in the rain. We don't care that, that people have to work. And we treat everybody as if they're from the bottom of the totem pole. And even those at the bottom of the totem pole are valuable Jamaicans. Ah, something has to give. Something has to change. I keep saying on this program, if we don't solve it now, what is going to happen to Jamaica? This is 2022. Let's say eight years from now for Vision 2030. Or 20 years from now. 1976, I'm a little seven-year-old boy walking down Fairfax Drive, going to the bus stop with my mother in hand or I in her hand. She puts me on the bus and she tells me, give the seat to elderly people if they come on the bus and don't forget to respect women. Have we lost it, Jamaica? Have we forgotten that there should be respect for people? Every week, I'm fighting against the bad-minded Jamaicans on the outside. No, I've got to look at, I have to, I have to look at Jamaica from the inside, from the state agencies. And I've got to say, if you can't straighten it out, why should Pastor Blair argue with those on the outside? That is why they, they stand up out there and cuss all the bad words. That is why people just don't have no respect for anybody, because it just don't seem that nobody cares. But you know what? I care. I care. And I believe that if we fight it together, it will change. I care and I believe that if you write the paper about it, like someone did recently to write about the fight for discipline, that if you write the papers, not just one paper, not just two, if you call all the radio stations, not because you don't listen to them, but call their call-in programs and tell them, we have to change. We have to care for the people at the bottom of the totem pole. We must give them respect. They should not be waiting in the rain. Mm. I sit on a board at one of the prisons and I was there for a Christmas function several months ago and the rain came down. And it made me ask the question, what happens when these inmates have to go to class? They have to walk in the rain. What happens when they have to go and eat? They have to walk in the rain. Listen, we've got to find a way to care. And we've got to care now. Talking about caring, somehow, I, I think we only care about getting to where we want to get, getting what we want, and doing what we want to do. You know, we, we're late for everything, and we're always rushing to somewhere. Now, my father told, told me the other day, he said, thank God for being in the army. He joined the army because his oldest brother had been in the army in, in the UK. And he says, You'll never find me being late for something. And if I'm going to be late, I'm not going. But Jamaicans, if we are 
to be somewhere in 20 minutes. We will leave out in 10 minutes. And if the rain falls, we're not going to church. We're not going to these places. Now, I'm looking at the road accidents in Jamaica. And ACP McKenzie said earlier this year that in many fatal accidents which occur in Jamaica, numerous factors contribute to the outcome. He pointed to two major areas of concern. Persons overtaking where there is a continuous white line and overtaken on an approaching a bridge or a corner. In the last week, I've seen five people overtake on a corner. I've seen two people overtake heading towards a bridge. And sadly, I myself have overtaken on a white line and I've had to say to myself with my wife beside me saying, Steve, a solid line, a solid line. Now, folks, the rules are simple and very straightforward. Is it that we have to be rushing, that we are overtaking in these areas? Well, can you hear the Director of Road Safety in the Ministry of Tr Transport says, the first rule of traffic, is, of traffic driving is relax and take it easy. Boy, if we could just learn to relax, take it easy, get to where we're going on time, care for the person in front of us, care for the person coming down the road so that we don't have to be pushing them off the road, then what a Jamaica this would be. I want to tell you something. I've said it before, and I'm going to close with this today. When I go to Cayman or Barbados, sometimes in America, the same Jamaicans that drive here as if a lion is running them down, the same Jamaicans that don't know what STOP stop means or what a red light means because they drive through it all day long, would never dare do it in the Cayman Islands. They would never dare do it in Barbados. Those, those little islands seem to have something called respect. Seems, they seem to have something called order. But I want to tell you what Jamaica has. When I came back home, I discovered that where there is no order, there is chaos. Chaos. And that's what we have. A country full of chaos. Men running around with guns that they shouldn't have, killing other young men because they said a bad word, people paying somebody $5,000 to take somebody's valuable life, people driving and damaging each other's cars and buses crashing head on, and the list goes on. The chaos can't stop but let it start with you and me. I vow, and I wish my mother is listening, and I wish my wife is listening, I vow to never overtake again on a solid line, even if it's a straight road, because these little things count. I'm Steve Blair. But before I go, I want to say one more thing. If, you're, if you've not been going to church since the start of COVID, a lot of churches don't have their members coming back out for one reason or another. And I know COVID still a go on. And I know monkeypox is on the scene. But you've been going to work or you've been on the road and you've been wearing your mask. Go to church, fellowship, because without solid food, you will die. Oh, enough said. Enough said by Stevie B. That's what I've had to say today as far as my talk, my thoughts on the rock. What are the different types of biblical hermeneutics? Are these are there rules? Is it still important today? Well, that is our topic. Hermeneutics. Look it up. H e r m e n e u t i c s. Hermeneutics. Join the discussion. Post all your comments on this topic on our Facebook Live, the Rock Broadcast, or send us a WhatsApp message or voice note to eight seven six nine nine seven three one two five. That's eight seven six nine nine seven three one two five using the hashtag the rock. Voice notes must be no more than thirty seconds. Turn your radios down. We'll share them throughout the program. Prepare to call in sometime maybe about eleven, eleven fifteen. Give us your questions, your your things you'd want our guests to talk about. Our guest today, returning from well, returning from the past, two great men, Doctor uh, Barry Hall and Reverend Doctor Michael Friday. They will join us today on The Rock, 
and they'll talk they'll tell us about this excellent word that has guided many for years this is the rock i'm steve blair don't go away we'll be right back Party them double up each ISIS And we know say you won't go like it And you face start your man in a fright with A cup of parry full up a beer niceness Two combination which one we try first When you are go to school or you are go to work for What we double can't be twice the flavor Or could that the pecan you end up a paper Try our pecan porridge That's peanut mixed with hominy Or our double corn porridge That's hominy mixed with cornmeal Try today at Juicy Patties Available at participating stores Phoenix Health and Vic. Main Street beside the health center. And now, Shop 30 Champion Plaza, Falma Trelawney. You heard me right. Shop 30 Champion Plaza, Falma Trelawney. The only full-service eye care center for all your designer frames and designer glasses. Boss, complete eye care. Book all your appointments now in St. Anne's Bay. Call 876-972-2388. 876-589-8327. For Falma and his environs, call this number. 876-533-0540. Looking forward to seeing you at both locations. Phoenix Health and Vision Center. Now our champion plaza, Falmouth Trelawney. Get ready for another testimony Tuesday inside a live 1 to 5 August 16. 2 o'clock will be time for prayer blast. More prayer, more power. 2.15 is that bring you another powerhouse testimony of god's goodness then at 3 p.m we go behind the pulpit of pastor wilford forbes of the good look church of god ministry all this and more will come your way inside alive 1 p.m to 5 p.m with me your host sarah and the jerky one on the family station love 101 jamaica, jamaica 60. 60. Let's get up and go. The I Love Summer Road Tours and Pull-Ups come to a close this coming Saturday, August 20, with the big one in Cool Cool Mandeville. Oh yes, it's time to wrap up the ILS Road Tour and we're doing it in fine style. Mandeville, are you ready for the exciting music filling, foot stomping, belly bossa laughing, enough niceness in the I Love Summer Road Tour? It's happening this coming Saturday, August 20. You can't afford to miss it and we'll be live on love 101 fm the family station see you there oh wow 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 we're back we're back and uh this is the Love 101, your rock station, ILS. I love summer. I love it. I love it. Hermeneutics, our topic today, the word most often refers to how to interpret the Bible or other sacred texts from other religions. So how do we and how should we interpret the Bible? Post all your comments on our Facebook live broadcast or our YouTube live broadcast. And of course, send your message in messages in via whatsapp 876-997-3125 using the hashtag the rock voice notes must be no more than 30 to 40 seconds turn your radio down because i don't want to hear my voice i want to hear yours and prepare to call in later on during the show so i want to just thank all of you joining us via the facebook and youtube ranks this morning i see that you're sending out your good mornings i see that you're agreeing with my topics um, Leslie says, no respect for the country and others. Marlene says, good morning, Pastor Blair. No respect for society. You are saying it well. So true. And Elise says, good morning, Pastor Blair and Facebook family. Can't thank you enough for this talk. Listen, folks, my talk is real. And my talk expects you to join me and fight. Yes, we're fighting for Jamaica. On the Rock today with me, Barry Hall and Reverend Dr. Michael Friday. Reverend Barrington Hall is a head or the head of Department of Biblical and Theological Studies at JTS. Oh, there he is. Missed him for a while. He has been serving with the JTS since 2005 holds a Master of Theology from the Dallas Theological Seminary and is a PhD candidate at Trinity Theological Seminary, so two of the top seminaries in the U.S. He possesses over 25 years of experience in pastoral care and counseling training and business management, teaching and case management. In keeping with 
his life's philosophy to make himself available to serve, to work, and to build. Reverend Hall maintains avid involvement in community life, serving as senior pastor of the Ecclesia Bible Fellowship. He's a marriage, family, and life counselor, a member of the board of directors and the Alumni Association for the Kingston Technical High School, and is married to Maureen and father to Sudian. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah. Joining us also, Reverend Dr. Michael Friday, one of my faves, born in Trinidad and Tobago, serves the Noank Baptist Church in Noank, Connecticut, as interim pastor. If you see him online right now, he looks like me. He's all bearded up today. And he's the interim pastoral specialist with Transition Ministries of the American Baptist Churches in the USA. He's vice president and president-elect of the American Baptist Churches of Connecticut, and uh, Michael holds a bachelor's degree in theology, a master's degree in organizational leadership, and a doctoral degree in preaching and communication. He's also an author, speaker, and columnist. He's been married for at least 37 years and has three children that he's raised. Yes. Gentlemen, I, I don't know how you do it. First, let me say I'm, I'm doing a master's because I'm trying to get my members in my church to go to school. So I'm really trying to encourage them. And with all the work I'm doing, it is T-O-U-G-H, tough. How did you do it, gentlemen? Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Yes. I normally use this, this next four minutes to just ask you guys. I give you a minute and a half each. Um, your thoughts on what I had to speak about before at the start of the program, as I spoke about the situations in Jamaica, the, the lack of customer care, the lack of caring for people. Uh, any of your thoughts? I'll start with uh, Barry Hall. Mm -hmm. Well, well, you know, I, I happen to share the sentiments. I spoke about that in for the independent service. And I think part of our problem is that we have been so far removed from independence that we no longer value the cost of it. And we misunderstand what the word freedom is. Mm. This freedom, this independent nation has taken freedom to levels that um, freedom was never meant to be. Freedom is not the exercise of doing what we want. Playing loud music in the business area. <laughs> you know, like people playing, people having the freedom right. to play loud music like that. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom is not that. Freedom is, is a, is a, um, the opportunity to do what is right. Um, as we were not independent before, we had no freedom. We couldn't exercise ourselves in any of those things. We just had to be. We just had to do what we were told to do. Um, but we have moved ourselves back to that kind of enslavement now, where we we act in such a way that the law has to be constantly over us, and we don't exercise ourselves as people who care about each other enough to act that way. And I think that's a major struggle in Jamaica. Um, people just do what they want without any regard to each other. Major, major struggle. Dr. Michael Friday, your thoughts? Uh, hi, Steve. Uh, hi, back. Barry. Um, How are you doing? You, you know, uh, I, I, you took me back, Steve, to 1994. I had just become the assistant police chaplain to Area 3 in Mandeville, and I was still living in Spanish Town, and I was making my first journey to Mandeville for a, 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 a conference. I, I was waiting for a police uh, radio car to pick me up. They didn't come, and then I had to rush off in my own car and heading down uh, Span uh, in Spanish Town, just beyond Spanish Town. I forget the name Old of Arbor. the area. The but uh, not, not yes. Old Harbor yet, but there's a there's a nice long stretch of road with a with an unbroken middle line, and I began to overtake, pelting down to get to Mandeville on time as the police chaplain, um, and I was pulled over by a corporal of police, and I told him my situation, man. I was waiting for one of your guys to pick me up, and he didn't come, and I'm, I'm, I'm and he's I, I said I'm the police chaplain for Area Three, and he said to me, "Come on, man. No member of the police force would drive like that." And he gave me a ticket. And I tell you this, I have never since 1994 overtaken on an unbroken line anywhere in the world where I am driving. Now, you know, uh, uh, Desmond Tutu, the late Desmond Tutu, had a favorite word. 
And I was reminded of that word a, a couple of weeks ago when Alan Bosak, another great uh, South African, was uh, a keynote speaker in a conference I was in abroad. The word is Ubuntu. Most Jamaicans are of African descent. And that word Ubuntu really means that I cannot see myself until I really fully see you. I am not me until I understand that I am part of you. And isn't that biblical? Isn't that what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians, that we are the body? Now, of course, not all well, Jamaicans. I'm going to cut you right there. I'm going to cut you right there. It's our 1030 break. We'll be right back. You sure. know, if you give Michael a chance to talk, he'll preach. So this is The Rock. I'm Steve Blair. And this, you'll be right back. Over 100 murders in one month, Jamaica. We can't continue like this. The killing must end. Do right by the future generation. Get the guns, save our country. The time brought to you by the office of the Prime Minister is... 10.31. Now more than ever, Protex reminds you to wash your hands. A 40-second hand wash with soap could help prevent COVID-19. Look for Protex at your nearest store. Jamaica and its workforce are advancing quickly. Life-changing opportunities are arising. You need training and support. We are the Renewed Heart NSTA Trust, committed to providing new and emerging skills training and opportunities. Come to heart. We'll help you claim your place in the workforce of the future. Love 101 now presents Facts on Monkeypox. There are no treatments specifically for monkeypox virus infections. For mild cases of monkeypox, over-the-counter medications like ibuprofen and acetaminophen can help with symptoms. Avoiding skin-to-skin -skin contact is the best way to limit the spread of monkeypox. That was Facts on Monkeypox, presented by Love 101 FM. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Jamaica land we love. Just want to say a very special good morning to all our Facebook and YouTube Rockites. And, you know, somehow every time I talk about you guys out there, I feel that those who are sending in their WhatsApp messages get a bit jealous that I'm not communicating with them by typing back with them or talking with them. But you know what? We give their messages and we also give their voice notes, which you don't get. So thank you for being a part of the program, you Rockites on WhatsApp. Yes, yes. Um, send out your, do me a favor, all of you on Facebook right now, just send a link or send out a link, sharing this link for Love FM throughout the day, every day, but especially when The Rock is on, so people can join in and learn the things that we have to discuss on this program. So a special good morning to so many of you. I've never seen the name Jacqueline Cleghorn before. Um, so welcome to you, Gabriel Burrell, who says blessings and Tatlene Witter, all of you, very big blessed day to you. Good morning, Andrea Gabidon, and good morning to all of you. I'm looking for your comments throughout this program. We have a lot to talk about. Today we're looking at the theme, hermeneutics, how our cultural traditions, our language, and our nature as historical beings make understanding possible. What does that have to do with understanding the Bible? Well, English language can perfectly capture every biblical concept. In order to get full understanding, word studies to include cultural traditions, language, history, and nature in relation to certain Hebrew and Greek words is necessary. Joining me today are two of my very, very good, uh, I want to say friends that I don't think I've ever met them in, in, in person, but they're brothers. They're my brothers. And one is wearing a beard like I'm wearing this morning, fully gray. Um, but they are, they're, they're, they're full of much more wisdom than I have. So good morning, Sir Barry. Good morning, Sir Michael. That's Michael Friday and Barry Hall. Gentlemen, yeah. a topic that you both are very familiar with. And um, let me start with, with um, the JTS man, Barry. Because I'll start with you most of the time. Because when I go to Michael, he's going to be a Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I love I love Michael Freddy. So Barry, tell me what is this thing called hermene hermeneutics and why is it important to us as the body of Christ? All right, the word hermeneutics um, is an ancient Greek word that means to to utter, to explain, to translate, and um, it 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 described how um, how the divine messages communicated earlier. Um, it was later translated into Latin, and this is where we get our word interpretation. From. So hermeneutics basically means to interpret. All right. Um, today um, we are we are in a modern society. Hermeneutics is viewed from two two eight, two two branches: philosophy and activity. And activity, I think, is where we want to focus on um, because it is in the activity that we look up. And we understand what the the verbal or the written word is communicating and establishing um, rules and principles how to translate, how to how to understand, and how do we interpret what is being said? Uh, with the philosophy, it it examines more not just the text itself, but but life, you know. Um, what happened how did this come around so um biblical hermeneutics is our focus i think um because if anything that is the little that i would know biblical hermeneutics and what we're looking at is how we are finding correct interpretation for the bible and the purpose of biblical um, hermeneutics is to protect us from misapplying misunderstanding scripture and not allowing the biases that come from the different church denominations from our own personal biases to color or uh color our understanding of truth we want to understand what god is saying and then we want to apply and obey that word regardless of any other kind of influence. So it is important first, because it teaches us how to correctly interpret scripture and apply it true to our lives. And it helps us to grow closer to the Lord because we walk with him. And the word walk is not to literally get up and walk beside him, but to live with him and helps us with our confidence in understanding the word when we study the word so 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 let me ask sir michael friday um for for the lay person in the church um firstly we find that so many of our church members don't go to bible study uh and and they're reading they're 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 not reading the bible as they should um we find that so many churches have been formalized upon the basis of an opinion um but i'm not talking about those that have theological minor theological differences but some just get formalized I, i've met pastors that tell me that they've had no no uh seminarian teaching but they just believe that this is what is right uh, many people follow especially men follow people that stand up upon what they believe why is this so important to to those lay people <laughs> that's a that's a very uh, interesting they don't see it as important but to you and yeah. i it should become more important or why yeah, is it not important there is this fallacious position that uh, things of the spirit have nothing to do with the intellect mm -hmm. um and it's a it's a huge mistake it sounds nice but it's 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 really a recipe for for trouble i mean even paul says to timothy study to show yourself approved <laughs> and so on and so forth um, I, I, you know, I, I, I always turn to this little thing where Jesus, when he repeats what we call the Shuma, the Shuma is that, that passage in Deuteronomy that every, most pastors, uh, declare when they're doing a dedication of babies, uh, that the, 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 the hey, Israel, the Lord, your God is one, uh, you shall love the Lord, your God with all your heart, soul and strength. 
when Jesus repeats that in the Gospels, he adds a fourth thing. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And I just think that he, he, he expected that in the 21st century there'd be people thinking the way you, you suggested that uh, there are people who think. We, we, need, we, need to be, uh, we need to apply our intellect. God has given that to us, and we, that is what we bring to the practice of hermeneutics. I would say, though, that good hermeneutics uh, begin with a knowledge of what the scriptures are before we could figure out what the scriptures mean. It's not just what the Bible says, but we have to figure out what it means. Uh, Paul himself, you know, who made some assertions that Jesus did not make. And now I'm not saying that he was wrong. I am just saying that he made statements that Jesus did not, and the proof is the volume of what Paul has uh, uh, in, in the Bible compared to what the Gospels say Jesus said. Paul warns that all scripture is given by what? Is it given by science? No. It, is it given by fact? No. It, is, it, is it given by experience, observation, anthropological exploration, physics, all of that? Um, no. It is by inspiration. And so we have to figure out what the nature of inspiration is and how we interpret inspiration versus how we interpret fact and science and history and all of that good stuff. Oh, so it's so important. That makes this an extremely important facet of the church um, because, because we, we hold dear to a book called the Bible, um, not written in English is one thing, um, having cultural differences so so uh, i guess that one of the questions i would ask then and, and you guys can feel free to flow without me telling you when to speak but as somebody who i taught in a seminary years ago um not as bosh and big like you guys like the D dallas theological <laughs> barry's rolling his eyes the dallas theological seminary but but the thing is to understand the cultural differences, to understand the languages. What are the things that we look for, therefore, gentlemen, in, in the hermeneutics that, that makes what we read stand out? I would say the first thing we should look for is context. We read and we, the, the, how most people read the Bible is that they take a verse and they, they take that verse and they apply it to themselves. There are several of them that they do that to. Constantly, we do that. We don't read it within the context to see um, who was being spoken to, what, were, what was being said to them, how did it relate, and does it relate to us? You know, um, one that readily comes to mind is, is, is to the prophet Jeremiah, you know, and, and we go around claiming that, 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 <laughs> that word. <laughs> 1129. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, know, yes. You know, we, we go around claiming that, that, you know, this is um, not to curse, but to bless and all of this sort of thing. Um, I think, too, uh, well, the context is the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, how do we see the word without attaching all sorts of other meanings to it? Do we understand it to be literal, which is probably the more how most evangelicals view it? Um, and even so, that is according to how it suits them. Uh, we tend to put, interpret things like numbers, um, we, we, what is called numerology. We tend to, um, to, to put meaning to things that the Bible doesn't state. And um, there is no consistency in, what, in how we do what we do. So if we apply this to here, so, yeah, to a verse mm -hmm. here. We go over to, an, uh, to another verse, and it, it's not the same application. We walk away and say, okay, well, that is literal, and this is our, we, we, you know, we don't, we don't, we, we're not consistent in the process that we use to study. And I think context is a primary and the main thing that we ought to look for. But there are others. So let, are others. let us look at, let's, let us look at that word context then, because that is a very big deal for the Jamaican church. Uh, and for Christians on a whole, not that it's a big deal for them, but in speaking with them um, or speaking amongst us, we see that oftentimes scriptures, yes, are taken out of context. How does uh, the study of, of hermeneutics help then? Because we know we're going to study 
and look at the uh, the context. Um, but the person who's reading the Bible and jumps and says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, this whole issue of context then becomes extremely important. And we, we discussed that verse on the program several times in the last few months. But the average person just jumps ahead and grabs every shout of blessing that everybody's shouting out there and accepts it as gospel in the yeah. name of Jesus. Yeah, the, 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 you know, that, that particular verse uh, in its context is spoken to a people who were uh, exiles. Uh, they, were, they were kind of thrown out of their own country. And some guy came and told them, relax, man, it's going to be only two years. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the response was from, from, from the prophet, the true prophet, nope, it's not going to be two, it's going to be 70. And while you're over there for these 70 years, some things are going to happen. Get, 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 you know, get ready to batten down for 70 years and so on and so forth. Right. So the, 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 the verse that people love to pull uh, overlooks, uh, forgets the wider context of bigger troubles. Look, I, I think we have to consistently remember to, to tell our, our people that the Bible is not one book. It is 66 books written by more than 66 authors that it is comprised of various kinds of uh, literature and each type of literature must be interpreted by the rules that govern each type of literature. You, you can't read a law document like, like it is poetry. And you can't take comedy as serious fact. That's why that guy got slapped upside his face the other day because some guy took a joke as serious. I mean, so, so the different types of literature in the Bible call for carefully understanding the literary types and keeping in the right lanes so, so that you don't interpret history as prophecy or, or prophecy as wisdom or lament as apocrypha or even letters as gospel or poetry as law. And, you know, and even when you're interpreting law, you have to be careful to understand that that law in the Bible was not immediately law for Jamaicans or Americans or Australians or even for Hivites or Hivite, uh, Hittites or Perizzites, but it was law for Hebrews and Israelites. And even then, it was law for a certain time for the Israelites and not for another time. For Look, it's a whole smorgasbord of, of, of issues we have to, 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 to remind people about for context. But, but I like that point. I like that point that we can't just grab something and run with it because um, it's given to um, a little boy in a, in a, with sheep or it's given to an area with certain people. Um, so as I listen to this whole talk and the, 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 the context of what we're looking at, I keep wondering over and over why these things are not being presented to people who are coming on board into Christianity because they, they, they are seeing on television people who just grab and go. Grab and go theology. You've yeah. never heard that word before, right? It's a, I, I've coined it, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I just baptized um, a, a man in his, I would say he's in his 40s and his two sons, one age 13 and one age 11. And uh, especially for the two young men, I had to be constantly aware and, and, and I'm not finished, you know, working with them for, for, for you know, for the basic um, discipleship picture. I, 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 am, I am so aware that the Gen Xers and Yers and Zers of today ain't buying the thing that you gentlemen and I bought just without any question when we were those ages. We have, this is where hermeneutics comes in. We really have to, 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 to take the old truths and find new ways to communicate those old truths. And what we have to do is, is to reduce the thing to its most irreducible core and then take it and then reinterpret it for our times. It is what, it's, there's something called the ladder of abstraction where you take a biblical truth in its particular time at the bottom of the ladder and you move up the ladder to figure out what you, 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 you bring it into abstraction what take it away from what it, it it says in that time to what it could possibly mean for all times and then bring it back down the other side of the ladder to what it should what it could possibly mean for us in our time we it's it's, it's a it's a 
tough piece of work. And, you know, Barry said something earlier on that, you know, one of the things hermeneutics, hermeneutics does is that it helps pull us away from our different biases. I think that we in the church have got to learn how to listen to one another across congregations, across denominations, believing that the Holy Spirit who has been given to us to lead us into all truth is the one who brings us into that truth as we listen to one another more. That's that's one of the ways we need to go. Mm. Ah, so, so as we look at this this thing, and we we understand through the interpretation that context is important. What else do we need to look at, or should I should I first ask? Because I heard Barry say it in in um, in I say the modern language or the modern way of speaking without without philosophizing it. What would be the principles then that we want to encapsulate around hermeneutics? Um, we, we talk about context, what else? I think we need to look at um, the historical, the grammatical um, meaning and, and what was happening then. When we, for example, this, even the same passage, you know, and as our brother just brought up, it spoke to a context of something that was happening historically in Israel's time. And we have to look back to that to help us to understand what was happening then when they wrote this. What is the grammar? What is, the, what is it saying grammatically? Um, and all of these things have to be applied. Those are the crucial laws of interpreting scripture. And, and um, as I would say, the, the, the main thing is to uh, understand it in a literary sense, literary sense. It has to be literal. Um, where it is literal when we talk about um the feeding of the five thousand we, we're not looking for some mystical meaning to five thousand that five thousand meant something and so you know it wasn't that he was literally feeding men it was feeding something else and that sort of thing we have to understand that you know we, we must we must apply this this to the scripture it's literal meaning, which is its plain or normal meaning. What it is saying, what it says, is what it means. When Jonah was swallowed by a big fish, um, it wasn't that um, the big fish represented some nation that took Jonah into captivity or that sort of thing. But literally, that he was swallowed by a big fish, you know, unless it says otherwise, unless the Bible says otherwise then we have to take it in that sense and not try to spiritualize um, anything or deny um, what it is saying. We also have to understand, as, as was brought up, genre, um, one of the things about narratives is that narratives just tell us a story. It is not trying to teach us how to then live. When we read that Solomon um, had how many thousand, how many hundred wives and how many thousand concubines. It is not teaching us that we ought to live this way, nor is it sanctioning that. It's literally just telling us that this is what Solomon did. The Bible is not sanctioning, but God is not hiding from us the fact that these men lived in a way that didn't please him or lived in a way of, of excess. When we read the story of Solomon and these women that he had, we would question how far Salman's wisdom went because it became his downfall in the end, you know. So the Bible is just telling us what happened in that sense. In the poetical genre, we have to understand that there are words that are going to be used, repeated, and expressed in certain ways, um, just what it is trying to say. So we have to understand that is poetry, and poetry does this. We have to understand what is, um, when we get over into the New Testament, we have to understand what is the teachings. What are the teachings that they're saying there? Are these applicable? Are these just narrative? No. And so when we understand these things, when we, when we put them into their proper genre, when we get back to the historical and grammatical and contextual means of, of interpreting the scripture, then we come up with the correct meaning of scripture. 
once we apply them consistently, we come up with the correct meaning of scripture. So, so it really shouldn't be as difficult a process as we make it out to be, um, especially when we take the time to learn, uh, as, as Dr. Friday said earlier, utilizing the intellect um, with the understanding of what this is all about. If we, if we, can, open, if we, if we can open and understand that there's history involved in this and through history, we can, we can turn to Augustine and um, all the different things that were said there and all the different things that were done um, and, and the writings. Oftentimes, gentlemen, when I'm when I'm studying, I'll, I'll see notes that said something about well, well. Oh, here's another thing for us: when when the books were written, the New Testament books, um, for instance, being written um, years years after the fact, as with other books. So let's 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 go. We we have four minutes. We have four minutes. Let's let's look at the another thing. So we've looked at context. We've looked at history. History gives us um, the richness as to what was taking place. You remember you you mentioned also the, the poetic books. I want to talk about those things with genre. Um, what about language or or culture? Hmm. Well, well, uh, I was, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, was, I was going to say that you know the, the Bible uses quite a lot of imagery and and metaphors and allegories and parables. You know, so so, so there there would be some folks within the Christian context, the wide Christian context, who would not take Jonah uh, and the, and and the, and the fish literally. They would take that in a certain other way because of the you know. I, I think the the thing is we have to remember that the Bible was written. All of those different books of the Bible were written from the perspective of faith for the pers for instilling faith they they though they contain history though they contain um you know you know some law and 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 and, and poetry and all that the, the 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 primary objective of the writers was to inspire faith from the perspective of faith so 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 it uses a lot of imagery um to, to communicate story it uses a lot of jesus was a great storyteller so while hermeneutics involves you know translation from original texts that in itself is problematic because we do not have the original texts of any of the biblical literature not a single one what we have are copies of copies of copies, and we have the, 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 the human error of the copying in the process of the copying. So even if hermeneutics were only about translation, we already have a challenge. Even if translation were not an issue, we are working with texts that are inspired, not scientific, oh, meant to be, not meant to be uh, purely historical or purely scientific, but uh, inspiration. So I, I'll, I'll pause there because I'm seeing the clock, and you know we could pick it. No, up no, no, because because <laughs> because this is, I want to get deeper in it. Because when I come back from the break in a few minutes, I, I'm going to want to ask that question. Let's let's look at some of the the issues in the Bible on the basis of hermeneutics. Um, is the book of Job an allegory? Is it is it a real story? Uh, it, um, as Barry mentioned, did. Jonah get caught in the whale. <laughs> Those are the stories. <laughs> Those <next> are... Time. <laughs> <laughs> Same bad time. <laughs> oh, but but people want to know, and, and at, at the end of the day, we we want to understand. People see the book of Job right before the book of Psalm, but don't realize how old the book is. That he may have been a contemporary of Abraham, all of the, all of these different things. So we're gonna we're gonna have a look at these. We're gonna go through our list of what we want to see through hermeneutics, and then jump at it. Jump at the Bible from the eye of the seminarians in front of me, Michael Friday and Barry Hall. Those are our guests here on the Rock. I'm Steve Blair. We'll be right back. We're going to this break, and uh, we thank you for joining us. Remember, you still have time to log in uh, or get your friends to log in so share the program because we're talking about the issues michael friday made mention of something I, I deem very 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 important some things were given for a time and for that time only some things were not given for today we we'll look at those things perhaps when we come back after this break <laughs> Thank you. 
listening to Love 101 FM, the family station. The time of love, it is uh, just about 11 o'clock. We now invite you to listen to the feature, Tech Time Drive, brought to you by Burt's Auto Parts. It hurts if you don't check Burt's. It hurts if you don't check Burt's. For the excellent customer service, our staff is knowledgeable and trustworthy. And we have a wide variety of supplies, society, and the price is right, yes, it's worth it. The solution to your auto parts needs to one stop shop. And we deliver to, so if you can come in, just link with our WhatsApp, or call and make your order. And remember, there's no other so It hurts if you don't check Burt's. So there's no need to say. It hurts if you don't check Burt's. traffic lights. The intention of the amber light is to notify you to slow down and prepare to stop. Do not try to speed through the amber light. I'm Derval Graham of Love 101 FM, the family station, reminding you to take time drive. It hurts if you don't check first. For the excellent customer service, our staff is knowledgeable and trustworthy. And we have a wide variety of supplies, society, and the price is right, yes, it's worth it. The solution to your auto parts needs to one stop shop. And we deliver to, so if you can come in, just link with our WhatsApp or call and make your order. And remember, there's no other so It hurts if you don't check first. So there's no need to say. It hurts if you don't check first. A Moment for Parents, brought to you by Parenting Jamaica, a program of the I Believe Initiative. I don't want an easy job to be a parent, you know. So me did glad when me hear say Parenting Jamaica can tell you what to do. Me learn say, parenting is about how you do it. And them have all of four different ways to grow up, Pitney. Them call it parenting styles. See if you can pick out your own. The first one is the authoritarian style, where you just set beer rules for the poor pitney them, and the pitney them have to behave proper all the time. Like when my granny used to say, pitney must be seen and not heard. Then you have the permissive style. Them the parents that do everything for the pitney them, and them give them anything they want. Then the third one is the neglectful style, where you don't spend enough time with the pitney them, so the pitney them get out of hand. But the fourth style is the right one. You give them enough love, but you still discipline and guide them. Them call it the authoritative style. And that is what all of us must try to do. So come make we do this thing right now. Make all of us be authoritative parents. A Moment for Parents was brought to you by Parenting Jamaica, a program of the I Believe Initiative. Become the hero on the scene by taking the COVID vaccine. Get vaccinated as soon as you get all the facts. Don't listen to the rumors. This vaccine might just make it possible for teachers to see face to face with schoolers. This vaccine make it safer for everybody from the young to the elderly. Don't you want to go back to living normally when things were more orderly? And if you want to live a long good life, then we all have to do what's right. So let's get vaccinated along with the heroes on the front line. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. You're invited to listen to Dollars and Cents every Thursday at 8.16 a.m. We'll give you tips on how to make your money count, how to save, and how to grow your worth. It's all inside Dollars and Cents, brought to you by BPM Financial Limited, taking you higher. That's Dollars and Cents every Thursday at 8.16 a.m. on the family station, Love 101. Yes, yes, welcome back. I'm Steve Blair, your host, and uh, you're tuned in to The Rock on Love 101. Our topic today, hermeneutics, that's the topic, and uh, does knowing the original term in Greek or Hebrew help shed new light on verses you thought you understood? How does it impact your understanding, and uh, how does it impact your understanding of God, your understanding of the Word of God, and what He says and cares about? Post all your comments on this topic on our Facebook Live, The Rock Broadcast, or send us a WhatsApp message or voice note at 876-9973125 using the hashtag the rock yes yes uh, voice notes must be no more than 30 to 40 seconds turn your radio down and we'll share them as we go through the program 
Well, you can also join in anytime in this next hour by calling the studio lines 968-8327, 968-8328. Uh, let us share your comments with our audience because we, we definitely want to bring you into this program today. Our guest, as has been for the last uh, 30 minutes or so on the program, uh, Dr. Michael Friday, Reverend Barry Hall, two great gentlemen, great, uh, I like to say the English way, two great learned gentlemen. And uh, they're here to help us today as we move forward and uh, have a look at this important topic that looks at other topics. Gentlemen, we go back into the program and uh, just want to thank those that are joining us on the program this morning, uh, once again, on Facebook and YouTube. Um, good morning, Miss Pinnock. Um, on YouTube, but that's Pauline Pinnock. I think that's Pauline in the Cayman Islands, I maybe. Um, so I've shared some of my thoughts with you during the break. I'm not sure if you saw my thoughts that I was putting out there. The fact that we, we have people, and 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 Barry mentioned it earlier, the, the, the literal grabbing of the word or, you know, it's, it's like a Rastaman saying, I'm taking a Nazarite vow, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um and, and not understanding so can i can i start with something like that how do you use hermeneutics to pull something like that apart well we, well we we have to understand that um that israel spoke to a, a nation of um that was composed of 12 tribes historically the book of genesis tells us the development of this tribe of these tribes it was a literal nation and a literal place. It wasn't a spiritual um, alignment too. The people who were Israelites were literally um, born of the seed of Abraham. Uh, it was not um, how a lot of people, would, well, some persons, no, not so much a lot, but even the rest of man claiming himself to be um, from the 12 tribes they, they don't belong to any tribe uh, not unless they can historically prove that they are indeed literal um the literal seed of abraham meaning that they are generations removed but the abraham was their literal father so we have to understand that that, that israel was a real place was a nation that was comprised of people who were born to abraham and and they are from his generations coming down uh so when we talk about a nazarite vow a nazarite vow had to do within the realm of israel and what it really signified to them what it meant to them when he takes a nazarite vow now the question would be um to what end what is he trying to prove what is he trying to accomplish what does he even understand what a Nazarite vow is? You know, so those are the questions I would ask. And, um, you know, they, they interpret the Bible as how they want to. They, they take pieces and they throw away others. Um, so you would, I would ask them point blank, um, how is that helping anyone know? And how is that helping you? Or does that help you in your relationship with God? This Nazarite vow that you're taking. Mm. I wonder how many things in our modern day society and how many um, sermons that, that we can pull apart with this program in the next 50 minutes, um, because we, we, have, we have a task not to be, not to be churchy, uh, not to be bossy, but to use the study to, to look at how we're receiving, how we're living um, the word. Mm -hmm. Michael? Look, I, I, yeah, you know what jumped to my mind as, 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 as Barry was speaking and as you formulated that question is, is that, especially since, you know, earlier on, Barry talked about, you know, the, the, how, how, how many, how much story there is in the scriptures. When you tell a story, I mean, we grew up hearing stories and we would hear a story ended with the moral of the story is. Now, the, the, the point is that it's not every single item in the story that, that becomes important. It is what the story as a whole is meant to communicate, the lesson you draw from it. 
so so that for me for example i i am not troubled by the position that a christian might take that um that that jonah was not swallowed into a, a real whale you know uh, as, as scientifically implausible as that may be um i am not troubled by, by it because the the, the 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 point of that story is is not the whale and is not is, 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 the, the point of the story has to do with with the attitude of a man who had a certain bias against a certain group of people whom he ought to have loved and whom he ought to have served. The, the, the point of the story is, is obedience to God. The point of the story is that God loves all peoples and we have no right, uh, you know, that having holding disdain for, for, for anybody. Uh, those are the points of the story. Th that's important for me. Now, uh, it, it, I, I would say that, that, um, with inspiration, we have to, con to continuously go back to the point of the Bible. The Bible is written by inspiration. And our, our biblical writers were very creative. I mean, they, 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 they exercised a lot of elbow room for expression. Let the trees of the fields clap their hands. Now, trees don't have hands. So we know we don't take that literally. It's 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 a it's a fluent kind of of inspirational, you know, metaphorical language that that we have to draw um, the the truths from. So 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 when you come to interpret inspiration, you have a challenge right away. So so for me, the bottom line of of all of this is that when it comes to biblical interpretation, I think that a number of of things have to be held all at once. One, I think, is that we we have to hold a, a place where we respect uncertainty more than we respect dogmatism. That same Paul, who who writes a lot of things sounding quite dogmatic, says, "Now we see through a glass darkly." We we have to respect uh, a, 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 a little bit of uncertainty. We have to understand that 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 uh, that that we don't know all there is to know, and and that we we keep on learning incrementally. We have to remember that no one person, no one denomination, not even one, not even for me, any one religion holds all the truth about the mystery of God. All humans are seeking. Uh, I, I, I am not I'm not holding the position that that all religions are right. I am simply saying that. All religions, including Christianity, seek to discover this God. And we Christians believe that we have a certain kind of revelation that, that makes us comfortable, but it makes some people feel that they are they are right and they alone are right and, and, and their particular denominational perspective is more right than everybody else or the only right one. We have to be careful about that. I, I think good hermeneutics renders us humble, renders us... A uh, uh, flexible renders us with with conviction, yes, but a willingness to be open to the possibility that we still see through a glass darkly, and we have to be open to what the Holy Spirit, whom who, who Jesus describes as as someone who can't be pigeonholed, the, the wind blows where it wills, the Holy Spirit is still free to roam about the place and do His thing. I think that's the kind of thing that we have to bring to hermeneutics. Um. Though, but Barry, let me just throw us. Some of that might be correct. Okay, go ahead. I, 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 her good hermeneutics also brings us to a place of certainty, which is more important than anything else. Good hermeneutics helps us to understand certainly what the word is saying. Good hermeneutics helps us to understand certainly the truth that is being communicated. So even though there might be things that we're not sure of, good hermeneutics helps us to understand everything in the word as being true and as being certain. It doesn't leave us up in the air um, grasping for anything else. And, and some of that certainty um, requires dogmatism. For example, um, when we talk about our acceptance of other religions, we must understand if we are going to believe um, in the Bible and in the God of the Bible, um, the Bible is very clear when Jesus says, 
I am the way. There is no other way. So any other religion that leads to another way or to another form to get to God is unacceptable. But Jesus wasn't a Christian <laughs> and, and he didn't establish Christianity. He established a, 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 a way to understand God. And that same Jesus said, I have other sheep who, be, who belong to the sheepfold and I must bring them, bring them yeah, in and yeah. gather them. We, I, we have to wonder. Yeah, but what even that this is mean. proper hermeneutics too. Well, yes, I, I, I am simply saying, sheep. yeah, I, I am and simply holding the, 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 yeah, I'm holding the position that that certainty is good, but I think I think there is a clue in how many Jesus in in the Gospels Jesus asked about uh, about 187 questions, and he answered only 17 of them. I, no, I, I have it wrong. I think he asked about 300 plus questions. He was asked about 187, and he answered only 17 of them. He often answered questions with questions and that tells me to some degree that we have to be we have to work a little more with uncertainty than certainty it's good to get to certainty i'm not saying that we that we always operate without uh, without certainty that 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 is the recipe for chaos we have to be certain about some things but we have to be willing to to to, to recognize that 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 look jesus too also said, I have many things to tell you, but you can't deal with all of them for now, which is why he went on to say, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide us into all truth. I would hate to think that I know all the truth right now. I would like to think that if I live for another 10 years or 20 years, that there is still 10 or 20 years of truth for me to still discover uh, and 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 that the glass becomes less dark. Less dark. Yeah, yes. You know, th th that's my point. <laughs> let me let me throw something at you guys. And I was, was going to ask Barry this question after you made your last statement. We talk about Jonah in the belly of the whale. Wouldn't hermeneutics say to us that we 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 contextualize, we use history, and we also have I, I can't recall the, the phrase I would use the the backup statement of a Jesus, for instance, talking in, in Matthew chapter 12 yeah. about Jonah three days in the belly of the whale yes. and then about getting saved. Barry, your thoughts? Yes, exactly. Um, it, it was placed in as a historical book because it doesn't fit into the category of what is allegory. Um, for example, Jonah is described as a real person. He interacts with real people. Um, he was on a real trip uh, to a very specific place. Jonah even pays money to take this trip, right? So the greatest internal evidence that Jonah, uh, um, that Jonah is not simple an allegory is the clearly interacts, is that he clearly interacts with God. He does, he interacts with God. Um, the, the, the Bible and church history recognize Jonah as a real person and a real prophet. Um, and we have to understand that we have a God who created the world miraculously. We have a God who just came out and said, let there be, and there was. You know, now if God can say, let there be light, and it becomes sun, in his, his, his separation and moon, just by the spoken word, then this God can miraculously cause this fish to come about and swallow Jonah to, to, to bring across the point to Jonah and a greater object lesson to us, as was brought out, you know. Um, and, and as you just rightly um, commented, uh, if nothing else, um, Jesus gives authenticity to the story when he links it to his very resurrection. So, yes hermeneutics helps us to understand what is allegory and what is not because hermeneutics helps us to place these things in their proper perspective one of the things that i think we 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 come away with with uh, we we have to face too with hermeneutics 
is something I think I hinted at earlier on that that there is a difference between scientific fact and spiritual faith, if I could use those words. There, there, there are facts which are scientifically proven, and there is faith which cannot be scientifically proven. Never mind the, the, the letter writer to the Hebrews says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, if you can't I mean, they're, 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 we, we guys know all the, all, all the philosophical arguments there are for the existence of God. We cannot, no one can scientifically prove that God exists. Yet, we, by faith, believe that God exists. No one was present when the world was created because that is a faith construct. We take it by faith that the world was created. We, uh, we, we and, and there's a tradition of faith uh, into which Jesus comes. And because we hold him to be the, 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 the word that was there in the beginning, the word that became flesh, we, we, we place a certain uh, level of, 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 of importance upon what everything he says and all of that. And, and, and we find our locus for our faith, our Christian faith in him. Uh, but there is still, I mean, look, when the devil, which also um, no one can prove scientifically exists, but we, uh, you know, there are lots of people who, who believe uh, that, that, that there is a, a, a real devil who is jumping all over their backs. Um, uh, and they believe that that is happening in Jamaica, while there might be somebody down in Australia who believes that the devil is also jumping <laughs> on their backs. I mean, all of these things are, are faith mysteries. And One second, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Friday, because because I don't want people to misunderstand you. Yep. But you and I and Barry would understand that the devil is not omnipresent. That's right. Right. For, that's my yeah. Yeah, right. That's what I was saying. <laughs> and it's hermeneutics that helps us to understand that. Yeah. Um, so, so, so when, when, when this devil tempted Jesus and said, "Hey, stand up on the on the pinnacle of the temple and jump," uh, Jesus knew that there was a law of gravity. We believe, we believe that because there is a, a, a report that he walked on water, that if he jumped, uh, he would be able to defy the law of gravity. All I'm trying to say is that hermeneutics helps us now to to, to ask the question. We have to ask the question. All those miracles that we have witnessed in the Gospels, why aren't we seeing them today? Uh, 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 all, all the raising from the dead that Jesus did. Why? Uh, and he said that we would be, you know, at least the, the Gospel records that he said, um, although, you know, it, the, when it appears in Mark, the question is whether that was part of the original, uh, the, 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 uh, that, that was part of... Um, the that was part of writings. the original script, but yes. but we could walk on snakes, handle snakes, walk on this and that. But 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 we have we it, we really do have to ask the question: What's going on here? Why is it that God was heard literally, or recorded as being heard literally by some in the past? Why is it we can't literally? With our own physical ears here, God today. What's going on here? What's what's the issue? Is it that God has changed? Is it that we have changed? Is it that the times have changed? Or is there more to it going on there? That's all I'm saying. That because we are uh, we are we live in a world that is more scientifically uh, sophisticated than it was during the time the 1500 year period when the various books of the Bible were written. Good hermeneutics at least, at least challenges us to ask some hard questions for which we often would not get answers that leave us comfortable. That's all I'm saying. That we have to, when I say that we have to be open to a little bit of uncertainty, I am also saying that we have to be open to a little bit of discomfort about the smug positions we take and about the smug positions we have told our people over the years, which the intelligent Gen Xers, Zers, Yers aren't taking today. And we have to be honest in saying to them, look, we really do not know about some things. If we can be so certain about everything, then we're no longer walking by faith. We're no longer walking by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight, tells me that if we walk by sight, there is certainty about where we're placing our feet. If we walk by faith, 
there is a faith certainty if i could uh, 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 coin that phrase walking by faith means that that like abraham who was told hey get up and go but i'm not telling you where you're going to go i'm not giving you a gps just go that's faith we have yes. to go forward with a, a measure of uncertainty and discomfort that's what that's what hermeneutics does for me at least uh, i want to i want to mess up the place now I, I, and I, i'm coming to you again barry I, I think you did a good job on that a while ago. Um, <laughs> but, 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 but let me let me just say this. Um, when we talk about faith, faith is not an abstract thing. The Bible says faith commit by hearing and hearing by the word. So faith then is defined for us and gives and comes out of an understanding of what the Bible says. See, that, that's a problem now about the other walk of faith, um, which I like to say is the other F word, but it's not faith. It might be fake, but not faith. The, the faith is premised on what God says and us trusting him for it being true and yeah. acting on that. But there are there is the other faith, faith that people have, have conjoined, conjoined to be um, what they could consider faith by saying, oh, well, faith, Faith then is anything I want to believe God can do, he will do. Uh, touching on miracles. Miracles were a sign, the Bible says. Um, and what does sign do? Sign points to something. For every miracle that Jesus Christ did, it revealed something about him being God. For every miracle that God did in the Bible, it also assured and revealed to the people of Israel that he is indeed God, and he's supernaturally watching over, guiding, leading, and protecting them, and they should trust him. Now, with those things recorded and coming down to us, proper hermeneutics helps us to understand that, hey, we don't have to see these things to know that this God is true anymore or that Jesus is true anymore. But we understand, based upon those things that he did, and for the fact that there have been witnesses um, throughout history who affirm these things, then we can trust what he says in his word. See, I, 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 I would push back on on one of the things you said. I, I, I faith is abstract. It is an abstraction out of which and in response to which we we work out expressions of that faith. We work out acts of obedience in response to that faith. I think it is in a book. I, I, I have this bad habit of reading books and forgetting where I read it, especially if it is a Kindle edition. And I think it is the Kindle edition of a book entitled The End of Evangelicalism. Mm -hmm. And the writer in that book says something like this, that when you take faith, you take a group of people, even in the same congregation, who all love Jesus from head to toe, and you ask and you try to define, you try to get each of them to define what they really mean about any about certain aspects of their faith. You 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 can't measure that they all share the exact same thing because it is not scientific. It, and it is, in a, it is in abstraction, even though they might use words to say what they believe, you, you can't measure it because it's, 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 it's an abstraction. But I understand what you mean. I understand your hesitation, Brother Barry, to, 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 to describe faith as, as not being in the abstract. I understand your explanation, but I still believe, well, it's more than belief. Faith is abstract because you can't see it. What you see is human response to it. Something that is abstract is something you can't see. I can't see your faith. I see, I see expressions of your faith. When Jesus said to the Syrophoenician woman, woman, you have great faith, it is he he was remember remember he tested that woman and and it is in testing her it is the actions that she did that expressed to jesus what 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 the abstraction of of, of her faith was i mean i don't want to split hairs but I, you know i i i, I rest my case <laughs> i hear you and, and i hear what you say too but it, remember you just said that it leads to obedience what yeah. are we going to obey if it's not written and that's well, a command given to yeah, us. I have no argument with that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Absolutely. 
And, and you know, you know, uh, 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 Steve, there, 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 you, you, you wanted to go in this direction much earlier. Here, here's a, here, here's a singer. Um, so Paul writes to the Corinthians, I think it is, and he says, I would not permit a woman to teach. I would not allow a woman to speak in church. Mm -hmm. Now, there are lots of denominations, including ba some Baptist denominations, not necessarily in Jamaica, who still disallow uh, female uh, ministers because of that. I, when I take that text and interpret it in its time, and run it up the ladder of abstraction that I referred to earlier on, taking it, taking it to what it could possibly mean for all time, and then bringing it back down to our time, I suspect that if Paul was writing in our time, he would write to say, I would not permit a whole lot of men to speak in church. Because today, back then, remember the story in Luke, uh, what is it, Luke uh, 10, verses 38 to 40, where he was in this house, and Mary and Martha were there, and Martha was busy like crazy in the kitchen, but Mary was outside there sitting with the men, learning, and Martha was upset, and Jesus, she came out, you know, threatening Jesus, tell my sister to get her tail back in the kitchen, and whatnot, and Jesus said, I'm, no, no. I've got to cut you, I've got to cut you, we're, we're due for 11.30 break, we're getting deeper, guys, and I, and I have some tough questions to ask. And, and and we've got to pull on hermeneutics to answer some of them. It's the 11.30 break. It's 11.31. We go to Nadine in studio for this break. Colgate Triple Action. Three benefits for a deep clean. As a mother, you always want to give the best to your family and to make them happy. With Colgate Triple Action, you give them three reasons to smile. Cavity protection, whiter teeth, and fresh breath. A unique formula with a minty flavor they will love. Colgate Triple Action. Find it at your favorite store. Love 101, the family station, invites you to Tech Time Drive. You can hear reminders and tips on why you should Tech Time Drive. On Tuesdays, Tech Time Drive is brought to you by Burt's Auto Parts. It hurts if you don't check Burt's. And on Wednesdays, Tech Time Drive is brought to you by AIM Financial Corporation Limited. AIM Financial Corporation has a loan for every purpose. Tech Time Drive, a bulletin of the road safety tips to help you keep safe and your head sound while driving. You only have one life. Drive it well. Tech Time Drive on the family station, Love 101. Shake and go with two shake. Shake and go. Grab a two shake and go. When we have to put in the work, but the moving slow. Grab a two shake and go. School time and not talk time. Office for the yard rain. Full time. Grab a two shake and go. When we open at the gym, we have to stay healthy and fit. Grab a two shake and go. Shake and go with two shake. Packed with nine grams of protein, 24 key vitamins and minerals to keep you going. Grab a two shake and go. The moment we've been waiting for is here. It's time to go back to school. Come to Payless and find the best styles and prices for your favorite back to school products. Everyone loves Payless. Restrictions apply. Valid through August 22. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Uh, welcome back. On WhatsApp. Question comes in, says, which one is harder, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ or a man being swallowed by a whale for three days and still living? Do we think God did not see this different interpretation? We should not be ignorant of logic, science, and common sense. However, remember, faith is not by sight or man's normal wisdom. Reference 1 Corinthians 1, 23, stumbling block of man's wisdom. Wow. Um, let's bring back in our guest. Um, Heisen Campbell Daly says, James spoke about the faith without works, which is dead. Show me your works and I'll show you your faith. And he used Abraham as an example of being faithful. Um, and Gabriel Emmanuel Borrell says, nice topic. I'm listening. And that's why we do this, Gabriel. Um, just be very different, a very unique program with extremely unique, great guests. Welcome back, gentlemen. Um, 
I've, I've really been sitting and thinking through this discussion and you know what we're talking about is so important in, in the last few years some people have recognized because of hermeneutical studies being shared with them rather than just throwing garbage to our church members that, that we want to keep pleasing all the time that you know there were women in the bible um, so jesus did preach to women other than mary and martha and when he was preaching to crowds a crowd of 5,000 could have meant 5,000 men, gentlemen. And, and then, and then, secondly, I want to I want to challenge the the past from the Ecclesia Church. Um, the, the the whole study of Ecclesia within the context using utilizing hermeneutics would would make church today perhaps rather differently. So I'm throwing those two things at you, scholars, gentlemen. Speak to me. <laughs> I'm not sure on the first question that you asked. Well, um, well the first question, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, so I think you were alluding to it but never delved into it, where we see Jesus preaching to a crowd of 5,000. Mm -hmm. um, through, through studying the, 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 his, the history of writing in that period, the culture of that period, mm -hmm. could that be 15,000 people? It could be more. Um, it says there were men that were counted, so it could have been more. The Bible does say men? Yes. Okay, I would have maybe. to look back in the original to see it, though, um, yes. to see exactly what it says. Um, I'd have to see it in the Greek. Yeah, I don't remember um, myself now whether it is the, uh, the the generic word for men or the, uh, the, 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 the literal word anthrope anthropos or uh, uh you know um but but it does say men in all the texts where it 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 it, it, it uh it's it is stated we uh again by by common sense um uh, and some would some would accuse us even at that point of adding one jot or tittle to the word but but we by inference and by common sense uh, uh, you, we conclude it couldn't be just men in that crowd. There, there had to be women and children uh, as well. Um, even if it is the, the literal word for men rather than the generic word for humans, um, we, we, I, I think we're, on, we're on, 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 on reasonable ground. Now, this is where if the Bible says men, some people will say it is men, period. You're, you're messing with the scriptures if you if if you say it is women or, or and children, and, and by but, that, but Dr. Friday, if if they're not going back to sitting down with with scholars and saying what does the original interpretation or what does the original word because you've been saying was the was the word man there meaning human was the word man there meaning men, some people don't make the time to examine that. But, but but my point is, just as I did with the Jonah story, do we get caught in the weeds of whether it was a literal fish or not, or do we get caught in the weeds about whether it was five or 15,000 people? The point of this story is that Jesus saw a need among a huge group of people, and he, he miraculously... Uh, uh, ministered to that need. That's the point of the story. And then there was a there was a seg uh, 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 what you call it a, a second part to the story where 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 the disciples were left with him, and he had to ask them, "Are you going to go away too?" And they they said, "No, you have the words of life." So so a, a story about bread, literal bread, became a, 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 an affirmation about him being the bread of life. So so we have to. We have to we have to learn how to that's that's one of the things hermeneutics does it takes us away from the weeds or the rabbit trails to the to the real issue i mean so 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 the the, the writer of ecclesiastes after he says time and time again all of it is a waste of time all of it is vanity he ends by saying what's the conclusion of the matter fear god and obey god Amos, after his, he's one of the minor prophets, but but he could have written a whole lot more. He 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 says, what what what's the what's the point of all of this? It is to 
love to, 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 to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. That is that is what God requires. I think one of the things that hermeneutics need uh, leads us to do is to learn how to how to help people find what is the real issue and what is the main lesson we need to take away from any part of of of, of the scriptures. Uh, because we could get lost in the weeds and we could we could make whole denominations out of out of all sorts of things out of out of you know also i i i know what i want to say but i don't want to marginalize some of our listeners but but you know people people make denominations out of out of um uh, dietary laws and and days to worship and 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 baptizing in one name or three names i mean we can go all over the place when we lose sight of what is the main thing keeping the main thing the main thing um, I, I want to go deeper. I want to. I want to keep throwing um, some curveballs at you guys because um, people are out there and, and they, they they somehow have just locked themselves in the box. I, as I sit with people, they tell me I must be crazy, and I'm asking, I'm, I'm just asking them to stop and and to work on that intellectual portion of their spirituality, Michael. I, I ask them to to stop and and, and look because. We talk about the six, six books, so that, so I'm, I may go there and, and you can help me. And and if I'm if I'm going beyond the realms of of hermeneutics, you can you can bring me back um, and take me in the right direction. We talk about the six six books, and we, first we say all scripture is inspired by God. So do I determine that the scriptures inspired by God are only the six six books? And that those are, <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just sitting down because the questions are there. I, I, I took the time to, to look at um, books quoted in the New Testament that are not in the Bible. Um, and, and so I, I see epidemic, epi, epi, you guys should have been helping me here. <laughs> Epidemides, Aratos, the book of Enoch that a lot of you hear about. Yep. What about the book of Jans and Jambres is mentioned in Second Timothy. Um, the epistle to the Laodiceans that's not there mentioned in Colossians 4. Uh, the life of Adam, which talks about Satan as an angel of light. How do we treat this with, with hermeneutics that, that there, there are hundreds, I believe, of books mentioned in the 66 books that are not there. They're quoted, they're used, but they're not there. Could they be inspired? How do we treat this, Byron or or Michael? Well, you 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 raise an issue that that is legitimately a, a hermeneutical issue, because what it does is that it takes us to a point where a lot of your listeners, a lot of lay people, uh, you know, are, don't know about it. May have heard only in passing, because it, it's not the usual place we we preachers, pastors go. Um, even in, 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 in preparing people for baptism and membership. And that is the whole thing about what we call the canon and how the 66 books were chosen. Um, I can assure you that, uh, that, that, that the inspiration that, that Paul was referencing when he says to Timothy, all scriptures are written, are given by inspiration of God. Uh, I could assure you that, uh, that, that the 66 books that the inspiration that led the men, and it was men, uh, long after Paul had written through the various uh, church councils and so on, where a lot of debate happened and so on. And I could tell you too, a lot of politicking went on as well. Um, it, it's a, it, it's so, so, so look, all I'm saying is that the way in which 66 books out of many more that were written and many more that were written, uh, the, the, the history will tell us, uh, that, 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 that we now refer to as inspirational rather than authoritative. Some were written by women, and on that basis alone, they were disqualified because mm -hmm. it was written by women. Wow. And it was a patriarchal time and a patriarchal church that sat down Culture. to mm -hmm. what the canon would be. So we have to deal with that whole can of worms as well. And, and let me finish what I was saying before time ran out. That yes. when Paul 
Paul, if Paul were writing today, I'm sure he would say, I would not permit some men to, to, to teach because back then, at the time Paul was writing, women weren't allowed to learn. So how could they be allowed to teach? And now we see how intelligent women are. Uh, you know, uh, Professor Hall will tell you that maybe some of his his, his female students at, at JTS, you know, clean the clock of the men when it comes to, to, to academic, uh, you know, uh, acumen. Women are highly intelligent and they always were. They didn't just become that today. And so there, there are a lot of, uh, well, look at our churches. What, what's, what's the ratio of men to women? So women are learning today. And that's that's historical again, gentlemen, because if you if you even look at modern history, um, two three year, two three hundred years ago, women weren't working or studying. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, there's some women today who are who are who are much more intelligent and much much better trained than men. And Paul would probably would, would would more than likely say, I would not permit some. I, I would not permit people who didn't learn and who weren't studying to prepare themselves uh, to prove them uh, prove themselves. I wouldn't allow them to teach. That's the whole issue there. And there will be people still today who would argue with me about that because you know it's what the Bible says. So I come back. I if if, if the last thing I would say today is this, it is that we have to figure out not just what the Bible says. But what it means, I love and it. What I love the it. Original writer meant what it meant in that time, and what it could not, what it does mean, but what it could possibly mean in our time. That's the heavy hauling task of of hermeneutics. I see Barry all said. Barry, you have anything to say, or should I ask you the question I have for you? What's the question? Your your the name of your church. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Ecclesia? Yeah. Ecclesia. I, it's, it's taking the, the, the um, Greek pronunciation. Ecclesia is the Latin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Help us with this because, you know, I love to study and, and, and I, I don't, I personally don't preach anymore. I, I, I just bring this, these kind of things out of my church because, because I think people need to know what the Bible is saying and what it means, right? Um, so when I, when, 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 I, when I did my study on church, I realized that the word church never existed until f the year 412 through a word named Kirish from the Germans. Um, if then, was, what, how, did you, how did you pronounce it? Ecclesia? Ecclesia. Mm. Ecclesia. Mm. Oh, I love it. It sounds, sounds like language to me. Ecle <laughs> Ecclesia. Um, if, if the Ecclesia is in the Bible, but brought to us through translation as church, having a different meaning from what the word church came out in, well, slightly different meaning in the year 400 uh, and 12 through the Germans, Kirish, which meant house of the Lord. Um, Ecclesia, Ecclesia you're, you're, I got to say it like you, because you say it so great, Ecclesia, um, which meant an assembly, a movement. Right. Um, where does that leave us today in how we've, We've generated into a pastor-centric movement of people um, going after the, the, the blessing theology um, and, and everything. <laughs> You've got to forgive me, gentlemen, because when I sit with you guys, I want to be like you. I just don't have the time to study anymore. <laughs> but, 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 but studying and learning these things made me stop to say, are we having ecclesia? Um... That question can be broken up in so many pieces and we'll spend the rest of the day answering it. That's but, why I asked you because I know it's a part of your short, mission. The short, the short answer is that what we call the, what, what the Bible describes as the baptism of the spirit is literally the, the founding of the church. We are baptized into one body, which is who is the body of Christ. And we become one in him vicariously having been baptized into his body we have entered into his death burial and resurrection and all of that and we have received the gifts that comes with grace and which which is mainly salvation and and all his acumens um once you have believed uh as according to acts and several other passages once you have believed on the gospel then you have you have become a part 
of the body of Christ. It is, it is not a, it is not something that we sit down and wait on. It is not something that we carry for, you know, as, as was brought up. Um, you know, many other things that we do today um, that does not originate within scripture, but comes from the tradition of men. Yes, the Bible is, it, yes, we are still the church. But then when we get into church definition, we have to see that uh, even though there are many persons within church, not many, there are not many, many persons who behave like the church in, in, in a lot of ways. Luke, for example, in Luke 14, Luke brings it out very clearly. There were many persons who were following Christ and he stopped to tell them what was the cost of discipleship. So though they were followers, there were not many disciples. And, and in the aspect of church, though we fit the definition of, of church, um, whether or not we are living as light, whether or not we are behaving like church is, is a whole different thing. And yes, um, much of it, our failure to, to live as a church comes about because of a failure to teach the word of God. Uh, it was said at the beginning by my brother when he said, and you notice I call him my brother because differences does not remove us from being a king in the body of Christ. You know, um, we have come to a place where we spiritualize everything simply because the Holy Spirit is, is, is a focus of the church in terms of the work that is being carried out now. And we, we behave as if um, there is nothing intellectual about mm. understanding the Bible and understanding what, where God is leading us. There's everything intellectual about it. Um, the invitation to salvation, God says, come, let us reason together. And reasoning involves intellect. So if we truly understand what what God is saying, and we truly understand the aspect of reasoning. Our reasoning is based upon our understanding of the word. So how does the church understand the word when the word is not being proclaimed? They will end up with anything, and they end up doing anything, and they seek to make it authentic through experience, through the declaration of authority, their own authority, the pastor's authority that are teaching, and we end up not doing what God says. But does that not still make us the church? If we're disobedient to the word, yes, we're still the church because we have been saved by faith, not works. See? Well, is our works important, critical? Because as James brings out, the demonstration of our faith is, or, or how our faith is, is known is a demonstration of how we then live. See, it's a yes. practical outworking. Faith yeah, is not something that we exercise on Sunday. And, 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 you know, right. and we have all this thing about, and that definition from Germany is clearly wrong because it alludes to church being a building. When the Bible is very specific that church is a living, breathing organism, see? And which means that it's the life of people. God says, I no longer inhabit. But, but, but Barry, 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 mm -hmm. you're touching where I want to go and you're touching it when we're wrapping up because if Kiresh being the house of the Lord equal church, according to AD 412, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in 2022, We've gathered together to carry out a Kiresh where people come to the house of the Lord to get blessed. People come to the house of the Lord because they, they're tired and they're stressed and they, they're, not, they're, they're not that group like an Acts church. You know, they're not that group where they're not a disciple church. They're, they're, they're the church that we want the church to be, which is fine. But at the end of the day, um, for, their, for their understanding through what even Ecclesia beyond the Bible is that assembly of people coming together for a common purpose, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't have that um, today. We, we have people that come together so pastor can give them something. Right. 
and, and not even and not even the mindset of carrying it out to others. Right. And that, and that's where my fight is. Um, thank God for Love FM that I can have this fight to transform the minds with professionals like you guys um, talking to us about what the Bible means. Let me just let me just take a break and go to what um, Tar Smith. I don't know who Tar is, but Tar for the first time has been on the program with their comments on YouTube. I believe if we go down that path of inserting what we think the writer meant in Scripture, we're going to go down a path of discrediting many other Scriptures in that regard. Uh, the question is, are we discrediting or are we shedding light? Um, Tor also says, I am fortunate to be uh, in a Jewish community, and no matter how learned the women are, even though they have position of leadership in some regards, they're not leaders in the synagogue to teach or preach. And once again, if you look at what's happening in the Mideast, and in Israel and in Saudi Arabia, where women are just getting driver's license in the last two years, we have to understand the hermeneutics leading to the cultural context of where they are. Uh, we got three minutes, gentlemen. Um, we've got to wrap. <laughs> Gabriel is writing, and Gabriel says, that is what the church needs, teaching. Wow. This topic needs another hour. I don't know. That is not up to me. But gentlemen, give us your last comments, a minute and a half each. Um, Michael, I'm always glad to have you. Thanks. Very quickly, um, you know, the scriptures interpret scriptures. And so we were kind of working with the John Johannine passage that just simply says that Jesus fed 5,000. But when you go to Matthew, Matthew literally says 5,000 men besides women and children. <laughs> so we, were forgetting, we were forgetting that part. It is spelled right, out. Yes. Um, I'm glad that Barry mentioned something about baptism because that's where I would like to close. That when Jesus says in the what we call the Great Commission, baptizing them into the name of the Father, he used the present infinitive, which is both the same in Greek as it is in English. A, a, an action that is not one and done. It is an action that continues. And in Luke 12, verse 50, I hear him saying, I have a baptism with which I am to be baptized, and I am under such great stress until it is completed. Was he talking about his baptism in the water by John? Absolutely not. He was speaking about his life. And I, I think we forget that in the church, we are still continually being baptized, and that is the work of discipleship, that is the work of hermeneutics, that is the work of the church, to continually do a work of continually allowing ourselves to be baptized into the body of Christ daily, and as we work with others, continually working with them, consuming them, inviting them, uh, drawing them into Jesus Christ, which is why we still have a long road to go and we will continue to agree and disagree, but we are brothers and sisters and we grow together in the spirit. I love the church, the whole church. Barry? I'm glad to be part of it. Uh, the, the topic hermeneutics is critical um, for the understanding of the word. Um, I remember what comes to mind quickly is, is, is the Ethiopian eunuch who read and God caused, you know, um, Philip to come up um, beside him. And, you know, Philip asked him, what, what are you reading? It, no, he was, to how it is played out, he was not even shocked to say, who are you on? What are you doing running beside the chariot? He was so engrossed in finding truth. Um, when he asked him if you understood, his immediate response is, how can I unless some man explain? Um, Paul writes to Timothy and says to Timothy, you have to study to show yourself approved. It means that there is a required process of going through so that you can write to divide the word of truth. The Holy Spirit will bring to mind and will help us to understand with the application of these principles. But it is not something that we just come up and just dream up and say, hey, this is what God is saying, which is what we see too often on a Sunday. Too often is what we hear um, on television and on radio also. And we have too many men in leadership that have not been trained, who don't have a desire for training, and don't see the value of training. And that simply is because they have never experienced training. Because training 
will open their minds in ways that they would never understand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barry. We've got to wrap. Okay. I don't know. I send a message to my producer. It looks like we need to go deeper with part two. I'll see what she says. I'll see what she does. That is Kathy. She says maybe. Kathy Gale, our producer, Nadine Blair in studio. That's Dr. Nadine Blair in studio. Mm -hmm. And this is Jamaica's number three, number four station, number one gospel station, Love FM. I'm your humble host, Pastor Steve Blair. We'll be back next week right here, this same time, 10 a.m. on The Rock on Love. Bye, Rockites. Your electrical, industrial, lighting, and 